Hi there and welcome to Contact Centers Explained. My name is Lee Swire and in this video we're going to be talking about installing and configuring an Audio Codes SBC. Now there are some prerequisites to this and that is that you already have a hypervisor that you wish to use. You've already obtained the software from the Audio Codes website and you're fairly familiar with using um, said hypervisor. I'm going to be using Hyper-V. Uh, it's just my preferred choice on what I have set up in my lab at home. Um, I have done or deployed this to VMware as well, um, although I've never tried it to any of the Linux-based or Red Hat-based um, hypervisors. This is me imparting my knowledge with you. There's no right or wrong way in my opinion of doing this. Um, I hope you find them useful. Uh, I do accept you know, feedback. If you think there's things I could do better or do different, do let me know. Either drop me an email, lee.swire at contactcentersexplained.com or post in the comments below. So let's jump straight to this. So this is my machine. And as I said before, we're going to be using Hyper-V as my hypervisor. I've already downloaded the software. Before we get started, we need to understand what it is we're going to be configuring and how that's going to be set up. So here we have some of my notes that I prepared earlier. And as you can see, I've already defined three interfaces that I wish to use, a management, a trusted SIP, and untrusted SIP. The VLANs that they're going to be on, one or zero, depending upon your hypervisor, um, as the management uh, VLAN, it's IP address, subnet mask, um, and then purpose. Uh, and again, I've got two others. I've got a VLAN of 1040, which I'm going to use with my trusted SIP uh, on a slash 24, and 1030 for my untrusted SIP, uh, again, on a slash 24. These can be what you want, but for the purposes of this video, we'll be referring back to these notes. Okay, jumping into the hypervisor, you'll see that I already have quite a few uh, virtual images um, already running, but for now, we're going to start build a brand new one. Give it a nice snazzy name um, for simplicity. I'm just going to call mine SBC03 purely because I've got two others which I do use. Uh, it's a generation one because the image that we've downloaded from the Audio Codes website and the documentation from Audio Codes clearly states to build it as a generation one. I'm going to give it base memory of uh, eight gig and I'm also going to switch on dynamic memory. Um, the initial network adapter that we're going to set up is going to be for my management network here. Um, so I need to make sure I connect it to the relevant uh, switch exposed on the hypervisor. My domain is listed there. Um, as it's an already existing hard drive that we have downloaded, I'm going to select to use an existing virtual machine. And I'm going to go and find this on the hypervisor. Um, and here it is. It's version uh, 7.2.254.202 of the audio codes firmware. And I'm going to hit next, and I'm going to hit finish. Now, if we go and look at this machine settings, we will see that it has just one processor, kind of really all it needs for the purposes of a lab, the hard drive that we've got selected, but more importantly, I only have one adapter connected. In my notes, I clearly stated I wanted three, so we need to go and add a couple more. But before we do that, one thing I want to make a note of is what the MAC address or the physical address of this adapter is because we're going to be configuring these within the operating system uh, I need to make sure that we set the right parameters on the right interface so looking at the management one I'm going to go to advanced features and when it starts up this will be populated and we'll come and grab that uh, as and when we go through so first of all let's add two more uh, VLANs so we'll create number two 1040 and I'll connect it to my VLANs virtual switch and I'll do exactly the same thing again. As you can see, my naming is pretty uh, self-explanatory and 1030. So now I have my three uh, network adapters. I am ready to go. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to connect to the console. And I'm going to hit start and we'll fire this machine up. So during its initial boot, uh, it will restart one or two times. This is so that the operating system um, is built and gets used to the underlying hardware and base configuration that we've just set. The audio codes uh, operating system is based on CentOS. Um, you can't really access the 
uh, operating system itself. It's all locked down, um, understandably, um, but I do know that it is based on the CentOS uh, OS. So if we just give it a couple of seconds to start. Uh, I could pause the video here. I choose not to simply because you will then see everything that goes on. You'll see if I make any mistakes or I have any um, gotchas, hopefully you'll pick up on that and they won't catch you out as well. So there's the first reboot while it gets itself ready. We just leave it. Uh, again, I could press enter to speed it up, but I just prefer to leave it so that I know that it's done everything itself. There's like been no uh, human intervention at this point. Uh, the underlying physical hardware that this is running on is a HP um, Gen 8, uh, I think it's GL180 uh, machine. It's got two physical processors. Um, I think it's 64, maybe even be 128 gig of uh, RAM. It's not the fastest, but again, it's purely for my home lab. So as you can see at the moment, the machine is booting up. It's attempting to acquire an IP address in my DHCP server. It will get one, but it won't use it. We're going to have to set that up manually uh, within the console. This is the part that unfortunately slows it down. Um, I'm not the best at small talk, so <laughs> please forgive me. Just hum to yourself. Uh, But what, while this is booting, one of the things we can be doing in, in parallel is, as I touched on earlier, I need to understand what the physical hardware the hypervisor has given to these adapters. So if we switch back, I can now see that the VLAN that I've associated or I intend to associate to my management address has, adapt, uh, has MAC address 00155Delta65. Apologies, it looks like I forgot to press numlock. Let's try that again. 00155 Delta 65 Alpha 119. And the one that I'd associated as my trusted SIP is on VLAN 1040. So VLAN 1040. Let's look at the advanced features. And this one is 00155 Delta 65 Alpha 11 Alpha. I'm pretty sure that this one can be one Bravo, but let's not assume, uh, but it is. So we'll copy all of that, change the end to be one Bravo. Uh, I'm just gonna save those for now. Come out of here and we will see now that we have been presented on the console with a welcome to audio code CLI, um, and then albeit with the, a timestamp, a username prompt. Now, the default username and password to log into an audio codes appliant is admin with a capital A. It is case sensitive. Password, the same value, so admin with a capital A. And as you can see, I'm now into the default out of the box OS. <clears throat> Using question mark, you are able to list the commands or syntax uh, available to you. Uh, and again, typing one of these commands and using question mark again will give you the ability to expand or see if there are any sub contexts or sub menus. So if I type admin and question mark, you can see that there are register streaming and unregister as an example of other commands I can use. Now at the moment, what we need to do is actually get this appliance connected to my management network so that we can both telnet and browse to the web UI uh, to be able to manage this uh, appliance. Uh, and get going moving forward. <clears throat> so in order to do that, uh, if you've used any switchings uh, before with a command line interface or you use the uh, Acme packet, you will notice that there's always an elevated or privileged uh, command line. Uh, and if again, if I type question mark, we can see that here it is of the name enable. So I'm going to use enable. Oops, sorry, this won't let me select, but there is an enable there. So I'm going to type enable and it will prompt me for a password. Again, because this is off the shelf, out of the box, the password is admin with a capital A. And you'll also notice that we now have a um, pound or hash symbol next to the appliance name, indicating that we're in the elevated or privileged command set. And pressing question mark will list all of those commands that are available to us. 
uh, pressing space just to move on from the more. Now what I need to do is basically start the config configuring this device. Now we could run the configuration wizard. That's the nice easy way to do it. But for me personally, I don't learn anything doing that. I like to get hands dirty with this and start going through. So if we look at the configure uh, context menu and press question mark, we can see that there are four additional um, sub menus underneath it. I know that I want to configure the network. So I'm going to go and press network press question mark and I can see that it says carriage return is basically all that's left to put me into the configure network menu. Now I'm in the configure network menu, pressing question mark again, gives me more um, options available to me. Uh, and what we want to uh, be doing here is we want to be configuring the interfaces. So I'm going to type interface, followed by question mark to see what sub menu is. And then it's going to say network interface. And then again, pressing question mark, I can either specify the index of the interface if I know it, I can display them, or I can search for them if there are lots. I'm going to do display, and there should only really be one um, listed or returned to me, uh, sorry, three returned to me, the three that we had uh, before. Nope, there's only one. That's because it's out of the box. And although those physical ports are connected, I'd incorrectly assume that the operating system would assign those, and it doesn't. Uh, what it does is just give you the uh, OAMP interface that you then need to set up. So again, using the uh, syntax similar to what we used before, we use interface, network, interface, and then this time pick interface zero as listed above. We are now in or on that interface and we're able to run the question mark and see all of the commands uh, available to us. Now, the first one I want to do is change the IP address. And if I hit the question mark, it says, now you need to provide what the actual IP address is. I'm looking over at my notes before, this is the IP I want to use. So 192.168.1.50. And if I hit question mark, you can see there's nothing further for me to complete. So they just press enter. Okay. So it's committed that, but it's not yet active. So if I was to try and ping this, nothing would be returned. Um, that's a very important thing to remember. As and when you go through configuring this device, it will commit everything initially to its um, memory, but it won't save it to ROM or its any file, however you want to word it, uh, until you either activate or save that config. That means if you're in the middle of defining complex configuration and the device reboots for whatever reason, everything you've done that has yet to be committed to memory will be lost. Very important you're aware of that. So we've set the initial IP address. Now I need to make sure that I set the relevant um, subnet mask. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one of the things I'm going to do here is type prefix. And again, I'm going to tab complete because I'm lazy. And then if I hit question mark, it's going to say, what's the prefix length? Now I put slash 24 here. Um, the reason I know this is because the actual subnet will be 255.255.255.0. There are eight bits that will be turned on there, eight bits that will be turned on there, eight bits that will be turned on there, and zero turned on there. So I'm going to define my subnet mask. Oh, interesting. Do I actually want it like this? That is prefix length. I'm right, 24. Excellent. And then uh, the final one I need to define is the gateway. So the gateway, again, pressing question marks, asking me what the default gateway is. So I'm going to put 192.68.1.1. And that is all set. What I should now be able to do is type activate, and that will define or configure all of that information. And if I bring up a PowerShell or command prompt, I should now be able to ping this address. And as you can see, uh, I can do. So with that, when you define the basic management uh, interface, the two core uh, means by which you can configure this device are through Telnet and through HTTP um, web UI. So if I bring up Putty, you should now have the ability to Telnet to this device. 
And as you can see, straight away I get the syntax, and again using admin, admin, I'm now in at the command line, exactly the same as I have here on the console. So I'm going to get rid of the console now because I don't need it. Uh, I'm going to remove this window, and I'm also going to bring up the web UI, so 192.168.1.50, as you can see I've done this before. Admin, admin, login, and here we are, here's our device. Now, at the moment, you can see that we have this one interface that we've just set up. We set a prefix length of 24. We've given it its IP address, its default gateway. Uh, everything that we did in the command line, we can do in the web interface. The web interface is the easiest for uh, use and simplicity. You can import, bulk import, bulk update. Um, but in terms of initially getting started, you do have to use the CLI. So you do have to get comfortable with navigating in, uh, and using this. There are also some attributes that are only available or you can only see when using the CLI. One of these is if I look at the physical ports, these are the ports that we set on the hypervisor earlier. You can see that we have three ports defined. Now we know that one of them will be tagging VLAN 1040 and one of them will be tagging VLAN 1030. And we know from looking at our notes that we have the physical addresses. What I don't know though from using the web UI is which of these relates to which of these. This is where we have to come in and use the CLI in order to obtain a little bit more information about the network. So again, with my Telenet session here, I'm going to enter the privilege mode using EN, which is short for enable. Type the password, which is admin, out of the box with a capital A. Again, I strongly recommend you change all of these, but for the purposes of this lab, we're not going to bother. And if we look at uh, question mark, let's make it nice and big and bring up all the commands, you can see that we have our um, <clears throat> core set of commands. And the one I'm actually interested in is the show. I want to show some running system information. Now I can do show run and dump everything out to the uh, console, or as we have done, I can type show question mark, and I can go in and get just the piece of information that I care about. So I'm going to use network. And then I'm going to, again, to do this, I'm typing question mark, I'm going to do interfaces. And then I'm just going to press enter and I want to dump out, um, oh, sorry, not interfaces. It is physical ports, apologies. <clears throat> so as you can see that I've dumped out the fact that the port name GE1 relates to MAC address or physical address ending A19. Looking at my notes, I can see A119 is my management address. So I'm going to add that's port G1. A11A relates to Gigabit Ethernet 2. Oh, I've put that exclamation because I'm trying to be neat. And that, by process of elimination, I'm going to assume is Gigabit Ethernet 3, which it is ending one Bravo. So Gigabit Ethernet underscore 3. What this means is when I refer back to the physical port view as shown here in the web UI, I know that Gigabit Ethernet 3 is my uh, network adapter that I'm associating to my untrusted SIP interface, and Gigabit Ethernet 2 is the one that I'm associating to my trusted SIP interface. Now, in addition to what we've done here in terms of setting up uh, basic information, we can also connect um, the audio code syslog viewer to the device so that any logging that the device is doing behind the scenes, we can also pump out. Uh, again, this is a tool that you can download from the Audio Codes website. It's their uh, device, and it will either allow us to connect to the appliance in question, or as we'll go through in later tutorials or later videos, we can get the appliance to send all of its syslog traffic directly to this viewer. But again, just to show, we're going to connect nice and easy to it. Admin, admin, again, nothing hit connect and we'll see this start to poll uh, some basic information here we go now the logging at the minute is turned right down uh, by default everything's turned down and or off for the device and it's up to us to go in and configure how we need it so you won't see much traffic um, shown 
in the syslog viewer here. But out of the box, we now have this appliance up and running. We understand what the three ports are, how they are seen in the UI, and we have the ability to connect uh, to the appliance. Let's now go and set up one of these trusted SIP uh, interfaces. So the way this works is the audio code has a physical, physical port. It associates a physical port to what we call an Ethernet device. And an Ethernet device is basically a bit further up the OSI stack and gives you the ability, if needed, to either tag or untag um, VLAN IDs. So we're going to go and uh, set up the config for hours now. And here's some labeling that I'd already used for plenty of my other devices. We're going to pick on the trusted SIP one. And we're going to give it a name of trusted SIP. We know that the VLAN ID for my notes is 1040. And we know that the underlying interface uh, is from group two. I'm going to leave it untagged because the hypervisor is going to tag the VLAN. But again, in order for us to have multiple Ethernet devices, we need to specify uh, a unique VLAN. And we'll do the same again for the untrusted. And give it group three. And we will untag that. And what I'm going to do as well is change the out of the box one to be a nice friendly name of management net. One thing you'll notice is we've made these configuration changes. And as I touched on earlier, at the moment, this is all in the running memory. Um, if this device resets, everything that we've just done thus far will be lost. You'll notice up around here, we have the big red box around the save. If you're happy that all of your changes are right or and all the work you've done thus far is good hitting save will store that to the or as audio code used to call it burn it to memory um, and it's now saved so if this device reboots it will maintain what all the information we've just done this far so we've set up some basic um, vlan tagging uh, we've associated it to our our ports now what we actually need to do is give it a proper um, IP interface, uh, sorry, IP address. So if we switch back to the IP interfaces, you can see that we have our management one. Uh, at the minute, the application type, everything is going to come over this interface, not what we want. So we need to first of all go and change this interface, and we want it just to be for OAMP. So operation, application, maintenance. Um, hit apply, and we can now see that we've changed the application type and we've removed media and control. I'm going to change its name to be management. Cool. And you'll see again, we've made these changes and the red save icon uh, has appeared. Now, in addition, I'm going to create my trusted SIP interface. I'm going to call this trusted SIP. It's going to be media and control, media being RTP, control being SIP. And the internet device or the Ethernet, sorry, the Ethernet device that we're going to use is the one that we just created a moment ago called trusted SIP. I'm going to give it the IP address as set in my notes, so 10, 10, 40, 1, 50. Uh, its prefix length is 24, as is in my notes. And my network gateways are always dot one. Um, so there we go. And we will do the exact same thing for the untrusted SIP, media and control, untrusted SIP, 10.10.30.150 slash 24 10.10.30.1 okay so we've now defined some core ip addressing for all of the adapters that we've got exposed in the hypervisor um, but we don't at this point know if you know we've connected this right if it works so it's always prudent uh, in my opinion to run some basic ping tests assuming that icmp is allowed through your firewall so using the cli we're going to jump back on to the device. Admin, admin. Switch into the enable or privilege command. I'm going to run a ping. And again, using the question mark, I'll make this nice and big for us so we can read it easier. Um, using question mark, I can see what attributes, if any, I need to pass. So if I put in the IP address 10.10.40.1, hit go we can see that straight away, yes, this device is getting a reply. However, what we don't know at this point is which physical adapter that ping request is using. 
yes, we can make an assumption that based on the IP addressing that we've set in the IP interfaces, it is using the trusted SIP adapter, but we don't know if there's any weird routing going on. Um, so what, one of the things we can do is we can force the ping request out of a specific interface. And again, if I type ping, and as we did before, do the question mark, before I hit enter here, if I type question mark again, I can see that there are some additional attributes that I can specify. One is enter the source configuration. If I type source, I can then see that I can specify a VoIP interface or, or, or a VoIP um, uh, source. I can then type the interface that I want to use. <clears throat> and then I can either use, use it based on the name, as we see here, so trusted SIP, or as I always find easier, VLAN. I know that this is on VLAN 1040, so VLAN 1040, and then hit question mark. And obviously I can then specify how many I want to do, or if I want to change the type or frequency. But now using this command, I am 100% certain that I will be pinging my gateway out of the adapter labeled trusted SIP, which has a VLAN tag of 1040, with an IP address of 10, 10, 40, 150. And if I get a response, I then know that I have connectivity on that network. And there we go. And we can see just by looking initially that we are pinging 10, 10, 41 from 10, 10, 40, 150, which is ETH1. So I'm fairly comfortable. But what we've done so far is set up the uh, audio code SBC with a basic management address, defined a trusted SIP, an untrusted SIP interface, demonstrated how we can prove network connectivity on those uh, interfaces, and are now in a position to move on to the next video of setting up the SIP ports, SIP proxies, IP groups, and getting a basic call in and out of the device. I hope you found that useful. Again, any comments, feedbacks, things you think work, things you think don't work, speed, do let me know. Um, I'm by no means a trainer. This is just me sharing my knowledge with you. Until next time, thanks.